Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Boulfet. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa today issued Royal Order No. 42 of 2020 forming the Financial Disclosures Examination Authority under the Chairmanship of the Court of Cassation, President and Supreme Judicial Council Deputy President Chancellor Abdullah bin Hassan al Bu'ainin. The panel should comprise, uh, shall comprise our prosecutor at the Cassation Court, Judge Sheikh Mohammed bin Ali Al Khalifa, Judge at the High Civil Court, Dr. Riyad Mohammed Ibrahim Siadi, and Judge at the High Civil Court Isa Mohammed Isa Daraj as members for a two-year term. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a phone call from the European Council President Charles Michel. They discussed the joint and continuous efforts being exerted by the two sides to combat terrorism and extremism in light of the recent events that took place in Europe. His Majesty the King expressed appreciation to the European Council President for his call that reflects the noble efforts he is exerting to consolidate mutual understanding among societies and religions as an alternative to division. His Majesty expressed his uh, categorical rejection of all forms of violence and extremism, stressing that terrorists and extremists do not represent true Islam, which is based on love and tolerance. His Majesty the King stated that Islam is the religion of morals, fraternity and peace with everyone, stressing at the same time the need to reject extremism and hate speech as well as to confront them wherever and in any form they are. His Majesty affirmed that Bahrainis always welcome everyone, coexist with them peacefully and respect all religions. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa expressed his congratulations to the doctors and all health workers in Bahrain as the Kingdom celebrates the Bahraini Doctors' Day for the first time in its history. His Royal Highness the Premier has expressed appreciation for the health professionals for serving their country and society through their sacrifices and efforts to preserve the safety and health of all. His Royal Highness has expressed pride in the medical sector's workers and said that they represent role models in their fields which reflect the successful policies to invest in the Bahraini citizens as the pillars of the development process. He affirmed that the health sector proved its competence in facing all health challenges as per international standards. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister pointed out the importance of the Bahraini doctor's role in enhancing the efficiency of the health system and stressed that the health sector is a key part of the government's development efforts as per the vision of his his Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to enhance various service sectors and to empower Bahrainis to bolster their contribution to the development process. His Royal Highness the Premier praised in this regard the efforts of the Ministry of Health in improving the skills of the Bahraini health workers and noted that Bahraini doctors have an honorable record of the sacrifice, competence and readiness to face all challenges and in preserving the health and safety of all. His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa also praised the efforts of the Bahrain Medical Society and its pioneering role in fulfilling the aspirations of the health workers and wished all Bahraini doctors further success. Under the directives of the National Guard President General, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa, the National Guard Director of Staff Major General Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Saud Al Khalifa inspected the leadership drill Flag of Glory 2, which was conducted by units of the National Guard. Sheikh Abdul Aziz stressed that conducting such exercises reflects the efforts of the National Guard Presidency within the framework of supporting the security institutions in the Kingdom. He praised the efforts of the leader and participants from the National Guard and noted that they enhanced the levels of readiness and high efficiency in the performance of national duty. He said that the exercise is an evaluation of the capabilities of the National Guard affiliates throughout testing command and control systems in all defense operations. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawzia Zainal, chaired the Council's weekly meeting. The Speaker expressed congratulations on the Kingdom's parliamentary achievements under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, whereby Representatives Council member Adil Al Asumi was elected President of the Arab Parliament by acclamation. She wished him success in supporting the Joint Arab Parliament reaction. The Council referred the reports of the National Audit Office for the fiscal year 2019 to 2020 
to the Committee of Financial and Economic Affairs to be studied. The Council asked the Committee to submit a report in this regard. The Council then reviewed and approved the request submitted by a number of its members to form a Parliamentary Investigation Committee concerning the medical services provided by the Ministry of Health. Another request was approved by the Council regarding the formation of a Parliamentary Investigation Committee on the pension funds run by the Social Insurance Organization. The Council then discussed and approved several proposals and draft laws. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, opened the renewed UN House in the presence of the UNDP President Representative to Bahrain, Stefano Petiano, and the Foreign Affairs Ministry Under Secretary for International Affairs, Sheikh Dr. Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. The Foreign Affairs Minister expressed the Kingdom's pride in the deep rooted cooperation with the UN and the progress relations witnessed in light of mutual keenness to bolster effective partnership. He affirmed the Kingdom's keenness on implementing initiatives to achieve the goals of sustainable development, to make further progress in all fields and increase the Kingdom's achievements. For his part, Stefano expressed a thanks and appreciation to the Minister for opening the new building. He commended the Kingdom's keenness on bolstering relations with the UN and its various agencies, as well as its achievements in the field of development, wishing Bahrain further progress and prosperity. Minister of Foreign Affairs Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani participated remotely in a joint ministerial meeting between the Gulf Cooperation Council, the GCC, and India, which was held on the sidelines of the 75th session of the United Nations General Assembly. The meeting was chaired by the UAE Minister of State for Foreign Affairs Dr. Anwar Gargash and the Indian Minister of State for External Affairs of India Dr. Subrahman Jayan Sharkar in the presence of GCC Secretary General Dr. Naif bin Falah. Hajraf. The minister expressed appreciation for this annual ministerial meeting between the GCC and India, which was held this year virtually in light of the coronavirus pandemic. He stressed the importance of international cooperation and partnership in handling the pandemic. He also praised the Indian government for its significant efforts to find an effective vaccine to eliminate the virus. The minister emphasized the kingdom's keenness on protecting people's health and welfare, including the Indian community. He also noted that by Bahrain has rolled out a comprehensive program of testing, tracing and treating, including high-quality healthcare provision, as well as a free meal program for those in need and ensuring that the Kingdom's expatriate workers' accommodation meets the necessary social distancing and health requirements. Dr. Zayani pointed out that all of this is on top of an economic support package to ensure that businesses and employees are protected and can bounce back as the world begins the process of recovery from the pandemic. The Foreign Minister extended uh, since, uh, sincere thanks and appreciation to the Indian Minister for India's statement hailing the signing of the Abraham Accords between the UAE, Bahrain and Israel. He expressed hope that this initiative will serve as an essential step towards a full comprehensive peace in the region. He added that now is uh, even more essential to work towards peace through direct negotiation between Palestinians and Israelis to achieve a just and viable two-state solution welcoming India's important support for this process. The minister highlighted that in order to achieve real comprehensive peace in the Middle East, the region needs political solutions to the situations in Yemen, Syria, Libya, Lebanon and Iraq. He added that the efforts must also be harnessed to confront extremist ideologies, counter-terrorism, de-arm all militias and ensure that arms are under the control of the legitimate governments. The meeting also spotlighted the historical friendship and cooperation between the GCC member states and India and ways to develop them for the benefits of both sides. The National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus held a press conference at the Crown Prince's Center for Training and Medical Research to discuss the latest updates on the coronavirus. The Undersecretary of the Ministry of Health, Walid al mana stated that Bahrain has permitted the emergency use of COVID-19 vaccine optionally for frontline workers to protect them from risks of contracting the virus. He stated that the coronavirus rapid antigen test allows individuals to test for the virus by using a no-swap 
people with a diagnosis of the patient's condition within 15 minutes without the need for a specialized laboratory. Elmana affirmed that the Ministry of Health, in cooperation with the Ministry of Education, is following up on all precautionary measures to combat the coronavirus in a manner that preserves the health and safety of students and the administrative, educational and technical bodies. He added that the schools in which cases have been discovered will not reopen until the Public Health Department of the Ministry of Health ensures that no new cases are registered and that the school is completely free of infection. He stated that although Bahrain is witnessing an improvement in the numbers of the active cases, everyone must continue to follow precautionary measures and instructions issued by the National Task Force to combat the coronavirus and the concerned authorities. The consultant of infectious diseases at Bahrain Military Hospital and member of the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, Manaf al Ghadani, stated that the emergency use of the vaccine is in full compliance with the laws and regulations in force in Bahrain, which allow for exceptional licensing in emergency cases. He added that results of studies of the first and second phases of clinical trials have shown that the vaccine is safe and effective. al Ghadani stated that for those wishing to use the rapid online test, the, test, the list of pharmacies in which it will be available will be updated periodically on the new website, healthalert.gov.ph. He added that the PCR examination is still required in case of the result is positive when using the rapid test. The consultant of infections and internal diseases at Salmania Medical Complex and member of the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, Dr. Jamila Salman, stated that the success in reducing the number of cases was a result of the responsibility of the people for the sake of Bahrain, reiterating the importance of avoiding gatherings and continuing to apply social distancing standards and wearing masks at all times. She added that the Ministry of Health continues its efforts for early access to active cases and contacts by expanding the range and numbers of daily and random tests in order to speed up treatment and thus recovery. The Ministry of Health announced the availability of the coronavirus rapid antigen test in pharmacies across the Kingdom of Bahrain with a ceiling price of 4 Bahraini dinars. The COVID-19 rapid test provides a fast and effective point of care testing with results being obtained in just 15 minutes. The initiative to make the fast testing technique accessible by all reflects the Kingdom's commitment to ensuring the availability of advanced diagnostic health care and treatment to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. COVID-19 according to the best global practices. A list of pharmacies that provide the COVID-19 rapid antigen test kits will be periodically updated by the Ministry of Health on their newly launched website at healthalert.gov.ph. The allocation and prices of the COVID-19 rapid antigen test kits have been supervised by the National Health Regulatory Authority. The Ministry of Health underscored that the polymerase chain reaction, the PCR test, remains the approved diagnostic tool used in the kingdom. The ministry concluded by reiterating that the COVID-19 rapid antigen test is performed as a nasal swab and the device gives results within 15 minutes with an accuracy rate of more than 93%. In addition, the rapid antigen test is easy to use, practical and time efficient. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 2,357 with 362 recoveries, 230 registered new cases and 3 deaths. 64 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 158 are contacts of active cases and 8 are travel related. The deceased were 74 and 73 year old citizens and a 40 year old expatriate. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to adhere to the rules and avoid public spaces when possible.